If you're feeling stuck or stagnant, like you're holding on to a past version of yourself that you somehow can't seem to let go of, then this is the video for you. Oh, this coffee is so good. I like to drink a half-calf coffee. That's a mouthful. It means that I can have more coffees throughout the day without as much caffeine. Great. <laughs> I recently went through a period where I was stuck in the past. I say recently, I mean very recently. I found myself telling the same stories over and over again. I was kind of stuck in this loop and I really couldn't get over this period of time of being this particular person who I'd now moved on from and it was actually speaking to a friend who used the analogy basically saying how it's like being an old lady and you're stuck saying oh when I was younger I you know looked really great but I'm old now and kind of keeping yourself stuck in that past like there was this better version of yourself or whatever it is that you hung up on and not really allowing yourself to one, embrace the present and two, move forward and look to the future. Like I say, I was stuck in this loop for a while and I feel like I've really come out the other side of it now and I'm feeling finally for the first time in quite a while, like I can move forward, like I am moving forward right now and it feels so freeing because I feel like I've put that old past version of myself to bed and so in this video I'm going to share some tips of how I did that that could hopefully help you if you are maybe feeling the same. First of all, I think it's really important to get clarity. So first of all, I would say journal on it and understand why you're stuck in this loop. I'm a big fan of journaling. It's something I've done for years and it's something that I like to do every morning. But I think taking the time more recently to do a specific practice where I'm kind of thinking about what it is that I'm holding on to about the past. It's so powerful if it's not something that you've done before or even if it is something that you do as part of your practice, putting that pen to paper and really allowing your words to just flow, that unconscious mind can let out more than you would imagine once you kind of let it flow on the page. You're not doing this to share with the world, this is just for you, an intimate practice so you can really sit and reflect on the reasons why you can't maybe let go of the past. Ask yourself, who were you in the past? what defined you? What is it about your past self that you're struggling to let go of? And I think most importantly, realizing how is holding onto your past self preventing you from moving forward. Now, this next point may sound a little bit dramatic and it can be dramatic as you'd like it to be or not, but I would recommend having a funeral for your past self to say goodbye and thanks. Now, this is something I actually did last week. I can't take credit for this idea. It was actually the friend that I mentioned who I was confiding in about being stuck in this loop. And she said to me, I think you need to bury your old self and say goodbye. And when she said that, I was like, oh, I think you're right. And so she came around last week and she decided to do the same too because she had some things that she also wanted to let go of. And we wrote letters to our old self and for full dramatic effect, we burnt our letters on the fire. You don't have to burn it on a fire if you have a safe place to burn your letter. If you decide to do this, you can do it in a tin can, preferably outside or if you do have a fire, or even just rip it up, that's probably the safest way. I'm not saying try this at home, but I have to say that the whole process was such a good release. And I think after reflecting, journaling on it, and then having that time to write that letter to say thanks, to just appreciate the journey that my past self had been on. For so long, I was mourning my old self, but not letting go. And so what giving my old self this funeral did, it really allowed me to have that closure. And so the whole ritual experience, whatever you want to call it, was really, really powerful for that. It's really important to acknowledge your past experiences without dwelling on them with guilt or regret. And also it's important to forgive yourself because I think another thing, and this is something I experienced as well, for me, I was looking at my past self on this pedestal as if they were better in some way, definitely somewhat through rose tinted glasses as it often is always easier to do when looking back. But even if you're looking at your past self in a negative way and you're kind of harboring some shame or guilt around your past self, either way, I think it can be easy to sort of berate yourself or berate your past self 
for either not improving or not maintaining this high level that you think your past self had at the time. And so that forgiveness, that self-forgiveness is so important to yourself now and to your past self in order to enable you to be able to actually fully move forward and put that past self quite literally in the past. Now this rolls on to point number three, which is to find acceptance for where you are now and focus on what's going right. I think often when we're stuck thinking about our past selves, it's often because we're holding some sort of grudge that our past selves didn't do enough in some way, that they haven't improved our situation for now. But actually you can't go back and change it. And so the way things are now, whether they're good or bad or could be better, accepting your current situation is so important because that's the only way you're going to actually be able to implement the steps to make change going forward. And you know what, you might even still be going through some sort of change now and it can feel quite uneasy and and scary, but you have to accept that change is a natural part of life. I actually did a video on this just recently. I will link it up here somewhere and in the description below. Definitely go check that out if you want to see more on that. But I think accepting that change is going to happen and that there's certain things that are outside of our control and we can only focus on ourselves and what we can do moving forward. So berating our past selves or holding on to this past ideal of what our life once was or what it could have been isn't going to help us. It's just going to keep us stuck in this loop. So that self-acceptance is so important to enable us to move forward. But hopefully by going through the process of journaling, of reflecting, of throwing a funeral for our past selves, whatever that looks like for you, that's how we start to move forward and let go of that past and start to look to the future. And also having gratitude for the things that are going right, even if it is the smallest thing, focusing your attention to what is going right can be so, so helpful. And try and do that without going, yeah, but my past self had this, or yeah, but my past self would have done this. That person's gone we've said goodbye to them already. What is going good right now? Focus on those things, focus on those things and make that a daily practice to do so. And even in that, you'll see such a shift in your mindset and it'll also make you feel excited to discover more positives in your life going forward. Speaking about your future, it is important to think about what you want for your future self. The past is gone. We can't do anything about that. We can't change that, but we can have some input as to what happens in our future for our future selves. Dwelling on the past keeps you stuck because it keeps you focusing on the future and it also keeps you from focusing on the present. Right now, in this moment, is all we ever really have. So what things are you going to do right now, today, in the next hour to shift the direction or move the needle in some way towards where you'd like to be in the future. And it starts with getting clear about what you want that to be. Once you take that power back and realize that you can make such a change and positive impact for your future self, it can help shift your perspective to stop dwelling in the past, focus on the present and think about what you want going forward and start doing those things and implementing those steps to get you there. And, you know, get excited about it, set some goals. It's that time of year, you know, people are going to be doing it when it comes to January, but it's never too late or early, whenever feels right for you. I'm personally someone who loves setting goals, manifesting, journaling, all that good stuff, however you like to do it, write it down, get clear about what you want. The journaling will keep coming back because, you know, I love a pen and a notebook, journal, get excited about it, make a vision board if you want, whatever you can do to get yourself in that headspace of feeling excited about the future and wanting to focus on that more than the past self. And this last point, number five, sums that up really nicely and that is to step into the identity of your future self. Once you've got that clear vision, that clear goal of what that person looks like, actually start to embody them. There's no point continually beating yourself up about the things that you didn't do or that you could have changed or you could have done better. What are the things that you can do now to make your future self more in line with the person you want to be? Not to be the old self, to be the new version of you because you can never go back to that old self. And ultimately, they haven't learned the lessons you've learned. They haven't 
been through maybe the struggles or had the life lessons that you've had. You are your wisest version of you right now. And so taking all of those life lessons, good, bad, hard, everything in between, and using those to fuel you and move forward and look to the future can be so empowering. And realizing that ultimately right now in the present is all we really have. So embracing it, making it the best you can for yourself, because ultimately you deserve it and you are worthy of that attention and focus right now. In your journey, do not forget to celebrate yourself. Any win, however small, is a win. Even through all the stuff that you've been through and you've overcome, celebrate that because the fact that you've made it this far is amazing. And even if you're not where you want to be yet, even the fact that you've sat down to watch this YouTube video, to take some time for yourself, to think, right, how can I move forward, shows that you're ready to make that shift and make that change. Now go and take that action because your current self deserves it and your future self is waiting for you to step into the person that you want to be. You are worthy. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a like, subscribe if you would like to see more. Remember your opinions are subject to change as are mine and that's okay. It's called growth. You've got this and I will see you next time. Bye.